Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's session. So today we are working with the My World of Work Live team. So the My World of Work Live team is about helping you young people understand what jobs Scotland is going to need in the future and helping you to get the skills you'll need for them. So today what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at the IT and digital technology sector and we'll have a look at the opportunities in that sector. We are then going to introduce you to our expert today who is Tanya from Hearts of Midlovian Football Club and you'll get your chance to ask some questions to Tanya. So I would like you all to get as involved as possible today. So feel free to use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen to ask us any questions as we go through the session. We will try and answer as many of these as we possibly can. And just to let you all know that today's session is being recorded so that any young people who couldn't make it today can still access resources. It will be available for you all to watch on the My World of Work YouTube channel. And this means that if you want to go back and rewatch it today, you can. Don't worry, though, everything you ask will be anonymous so you can select that option in the Q&A box. So before we introduce you to today's expert, Tanya, we're going to have a look at the IT and digital technology sector. So. In Scotland, there are currently over 100,000 people employed in digital technology roles, but 40 of these are employed within the digital technology sector, while 60%, like Tanya, are employed in digital roles across other sectors. There are around 13,000 new opportunities in this sector every year, and the average salary is above £36,000, which is 26% higher than the average Scottish salary. So, our expert today is Tanya. So she is the Digital Education Programme Manager for the Hearts of Midlovian Football Club. And she started her career at Harriet Watt University, where she studied computer science. She has worked in a range of different roles, including app agencies and a robotics startup. Our current role at the football club and help, help involves helping to create opportunities for the community to learn about STEM and the roles it is playing in all aspects of life. So I am now going to hand you over to Tanya. Perfect. Hi everyone, um, my name is Tanya um, and as we've already said I'm the Digital Education Programme Manager for Heart Midlothian Football Club in Edinburgh. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background about me, I studied computer science at university and from there I went on to do a couple of different roles that's already been mentioned and um, such as working in research and a robotics startup. In fact you can probably see some of the little robots from that company just behind me. Um, so I guess you might be wondering what or why a computer science graduate is now working at a football club. Um, so a couple of years ago Heart Midlothian launched a new innovation centre and that was a space for the community to come in and learn about the world of digital and technology. So we know that almost every job nowadays involves some kind of digital skills and the owner of the club, Anne Budge, who has also previously run and sold her own tech company, knew that this was an important area that she wanted the club to kind of focus on as part of their community outreach. So a lot of people probably don't realise just how much community work football clubs do. Um, so regardless of whether you're a heart supporter or not, every club in Scotland does their part to help their area. Um, so that's kind of where my job comes in. So I organise, plan and run lots of free different events and programmes so that people can come in and learn or try something different, whether that's in our robotics club for primary and secondary school students or our careers club for young adults to learn about different options and opportunities that are available to them. Um, so the key thing whenever I run these events is making sure that we share the message that there's a lot more to football clubs than just football. Um, there are staff members running social media to engage our fan base online and offline. We have designers in-house using technology to create all the wonderful materials that we have on our websites and that are used on match days. And then there's also people looking after our ticketing system so that when you go on to book your ticket to a game, you get your spot, you can pick it, you're not on the same seat with someone else. Um, there's also a lot happening on the sporting side as well, which I don't think people realise, and it's also really, really fascinating. So most sports clubs nowadays will be using some kind of technology, um, and football clubs in particular will have trackers that all of their players will wear during training, during games, and they capture data like how fast players are running, where they are on the pitch at certain times of the game, and then it's someone's job to take all that data and analyse it and turn it into information that they can then pass on to the coaching and the managing team 
to help them make decisions like the team lineup or player positions. Um, and then they can use that to help continue the whole team to improve and hopefully win some games. Um, so that was a really quick pass over some of what we do, but I'll, hopefully it gives you an idea of how sport and STEM can go hand in hand. That's brilliant, Tanya. Thanks very much. And so what was it that kind of got you interested in working in the kind of digital sector? Oh, um, since, probably since high school, um, I always enjoyed computing at school and um, I thought it was a really interesting subject. Um, it was always a bit challenging because it was very new. Um, and then we started doing coding one day at school. And to be honest, I absolutely hated it because it was so <laughs> frustrating. Um, but I think once I started to get the hang of it and I seen my programs running on a screen, I was like, this is actually really, really cool. Um, so I wanted to explore it more. Um, I was really, really lucky that I had a really great teacher at the time in computing. Um, so I think that just kind of spurred me on to keep exploring it more. Brilliant, that's really cool. So I've got some questions in from the audience. So someone's asking, what tasks do you have to do day to day? That's a good question. Um, so it changes every day. Um, so we run quite a few different clubs. So when the Innovation Centre first started, there was just one code club that we ran. Um, but now we run a whole suite of programmes for different age groups. So we've now gone into employability and we're looking at teaching older people how to use IT, which is so important right now because we're all at home. We're all using tech to stay in touch. Um, so some days I might be running a little coding workshop online. Other days I might be on a phone to the volunteers talking them through how we're going to reach out to some older people right now and make sure that they can use software and the devices that have been sent out to them. Um, I mean, usually normal times when we're in the office, it's probably a little bit more exciting because the office is actually at the stadium. And um, so I'd usually get to wander around the pitch on the way to other meetings. Um, but yeah, it's different every day, but it's really exciting. Oh, that sounds great. That sounds really exciting, <laughs> really interesting. And what skills would you say are like most important to your job? Oh, um, definitely organisation. Um, so I've got to keep track of what clubs are running, who's going to be coming to which session, and um, also being able to kind of be chatting, make people feel like confident and at ease because presenting a, a session or a class to a group of people online or in person can be quite scary if that's not your everyday job. So if we have people come in to do a guest speaker slot at our careers club, a lot of that will be just kind of making sure they've got everything they need and that they're feeling good. Um, so it's quite a mix. I'd say organisation that people's skills is probably up there. Brilliant. And what would you say are the most enjoyable parts of your job? Oh, um, I absolutely love it when we get to the end of a programme, um, not because of the reasons you might be thinking, <laughs> but because you really see how much everyone's learned or how people's perceptions of digital and technology might have changed over those six to ten weeks. Um, I find that really great. We have we do a lot of like primary school age group kids um, and like some of them will come in and they're like I don't really care about coding I just want to kick a football which fair dues um, but by the end they're like really excited about whatever piece of code they've written um, also, during slightly more normal times, all the staff at the football club can go to the games. Um, so that's also very exciting, although I haven't been this season yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a shame, but that's what a perk to get, isn't it? It's a really good one. And what would you say are the most challenging parts of your job? Ooh, um, probably explaining to people what we do in a way um, because a lot of people just think football club oh it's just football that must be what your roles to do with and um, so if we're talking to companies about trying to get some guest speakers along to support sometimes they'll be like oh I don't know anything about football and um, so it's kind of having to try and explain it and break it down a little bit more so that can sometimes be hard um, also I don't have a football background um, which is probably quite surprising to most people. Um, I work at a football club and I, I still don't really know that much about it. <laughs> I'm still trying to learn. Um, 
so sometimes if I'm speaking to people or I'm trying to integrate like sport into our programs I'm like I need to do some research because I don't understand any of this but so it's challenging but it's also quite cool because I really like learning new things so that ties into that. Yeah, that's really cool. And obviously, I know, as you said, everyone's working from home just now, mm -hmm. us included. But usually, do you do any sort of outreach? Like, do you travel to any remote locations? Oh, um, we haven't so far. Um, normally, we would go into schools and kind of do some workshops or promote what we're doing at the club. Um, but we haven't so far had a chance to do anything remote. Although I guess being online has been really cool in that sense because we have managed to get young people from like all across Scotland. And yeah. um, so that's been really nice. Yeah, that sounds really good. And so yeah. and what subjects would you recommend someone does at school? Mm. Um, so I would always say pick subjects that you're interested in because you're always going to find the motivation to study for them if you're already naturally interested. Um, have a think about what kind of thing you might want to do in the future um, and not necessarily just so like I know when I was in high school computing was seen as a bit of a boring class um, like I kind of thought oh I don't want to do computing I'm just going to be doing spreadsheets all day um, but it's definitely not like that so if you're not sure what a class maybe might have a, going on in it speak to the teacher of that class see like what kind of topics they're going to cover because it might actually surprise you in that sense okay that's really good and leading on from that someone's asked like do i need to be good at computing and maths for a job like yours oh um <laughs> so, <laughs> maths is a it's a funny one so that's another subject i I knew it was important but I just didn't enjoy that much at school. I always felt like I had to work so so hard at maths and um, just to get get through it. Um, so if you're thinking about doing anything in computing or STEM, maths is one of those subjects that is going to keep popping up and um, which is great if you love it um, and if you don't love it then you know you can have to find a way to make it interesting but I think looking at it looking at maths through the lens of like computing can make it more interesting for me anyway. Um, so definitely being aware and open to the fact that maths is, is going to keep coming up is useful. Um, I definitely do use a lot of computing and maths like skills I've got from those classes in my job now because I need to know um, a little bit about you know the, the kind of stuff I'm teaching young people when they come to our clubs. So we can set up a robotics club, but what do I actually want to teach people at this club? Um, so I do need to draw on it from that side. Okay, that's really cool. And oh, people are giving us really good questions today. <laughs> what do you think the future of digital tech will be at the football club over the next few years? Oh, <laughs> oh. Um, that is brilliant. So I don't know if, if we've got any football fans here, um, but we had the Scottish Cup semi-finals maybe a couple of weekends ago. So Hearts were playing in it. Um, and that was one of the first Scottish Cup games that had actually used goal line technology at it, um, which I personally find crazy. I don't see why it's not at every stadium. Um, so basically, for anyone who doesn't know, it's basically lots of like high-tech fast cameras around the pitch to try and keep track of the ball to see if it's gone over certain lines, if it's in certain parts of the pitch, and it can help you with working out if it was a goal or not. Um, so I think technology like that is going to start to be used more and more. I know they're using it a lot more down in England. Um, but there are a lot of mixed feelings about it so far. Um, there's also in rugby, there's a club down south that's using um, virtual reality. So to train their players, so they'll actually be wearing these virtual reality headsets to kind of look at scenes from a game for them to kind of reflect on what's happening so that they can say, oh, I can see why I didn't do that right, because they're fully immersed in it with virtual reality. So they can kind of see it from all angles rather than just on the screen. And um, so I think that's going to be used a lot more as a training aid. That's actually amazing. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> and what would you say is the absolute highlight of your job? Oh, the absolute highlight? Um, 
Oh, I think it's, it's getting to learn things every day. Um, because I, I don't know a lot about sports, um, I get to learn something new. So it kind of keeps, it keeps everything like kind of fresh. So normally like in a job, you might get a little bit bored because you're like, oh, I know all this, it's pretty easy. Um, but with this job, it's kind of like, there's always something new to keep up with. And I would say that applies to technology in general. It's such a fast paced area, like inventions are being made every day, changes are happening. And it's, it's wonderful. It's kind of scary how fast it moves, but it's so cool to think that you could be part of that. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really good. And this is, this is quite an interesting one, actually. Someone's saying, do you have anything to do with the press conferences? Oh, um, so I personally don't, um, although the room that we use at the stadium for most of our programmes is the media suite. And um, so that's where our press conferences happens. That's where on a match day we'd have journalists come in to write up their reports um, in between the intervals of the game. Um, so while although I'm not act, like involved in the press conference itself, I am like in the area that it, it gets held in which is quite cool um but yeah I have so much respect for people in that area of the club because it's such a fast-paced job as well yeah. keeping up with all the news yeah it's quite quite a lot of pressure to imagine <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah okay I'm actually loving these questions so someone says what advice would you give your 14 year old self oh <laughs> 14 year oh man much um <laughs> i think maybe to be slightly easier on myself um when i was in school i was like constantly so worried and anxious about the future like you know oh am i gonna get good enough grades to go to university am i like doing okay is there something more i could be doing um definitely like chill out younger <laughs> like, come on um there's so much pressure at that age and I think just taking time to kind of realise how far you've come, like what achievements you have made. Um, I'm not saying do your best, like absolutely try your best. But if you, you know, it doesn't work out or you don't get the grades you want, there are always so, so many pathways available to you. Like we run a careers club every year um, and a lot of young people coming along to that think that they have to go straight from school to university. and that's fine if that's what you want to do that's absolutely perfect well done you um but it's not for everyone if that's not what you want to do there's absolutely no shame in that there are so so many ways you can get to wherever you want to go yeah definitely that's so true especially nowadays i think there's so many more options yeah um, straight to uni so we've got a question here from piltocri high school i'm hoping i said that right um, you've kind of already answered this, but what is your favourite thing about your job? Oh, um, OK, so definitely the whole seeing like people's attitudes towards football and sport changing and seeing confidence grow from people who come along. Um, but also, I really, really enjoy just speaking to all the staff members on the sports side and finding out more about what they do they probably think I'm really annoying because I just ask so many questions <laughs> um but I just find it fascinating about all the work they do um and thinking about how we can tie that into like the digital side of what we're doing in our outreach programs yeah that's brilliant and we've got a question here um does relegation have any impact on your job um so it hasn't so far um because we're I'm in the kind of community department so it's still part of hearts and um, because we do a lot of the outreach a lot of the funding is coming from a lot of different places and um, so we've not had any impact in that sense um, although obviously staff morale obviously does go a bit low when you get relegated because it's never the nicest feeling and um, although that being said everyone has still been of really high spirits because Hearts have been doing really well so far in this season and um, so I think we're all enjoying that um, and trying to take some happiness out of that throughout like lockdown and everything. Yeah definitely I bet you that's great though <laughs> I think when people's spirits aren't always great it's good to have a little a little yeah. lift isn't it? Okay so someone's asking 
when you've calculated the results and statistics, do you share this information with the players? Oh, so I know that they're very, very secretive about the data they gather. Um, a lot of teams don't want that data going to other teams, for example, um, because it might give them an advantage. They might know, oh, this player is going to probably be here doing this kind of movement. Um, but I think they do share it with the players themselves. I, I believe, I might be wrong, but I think they do use this to help the players kind of with their own professional development um, and their fitness plans. So they will share it to an extent, I think, yeah. But I don't, not in a way that, not in a way to say like, oh, you're not running faster than everyone else. It won't yeah. be like in a bad way. Okay, that's really good. And is it better to have fans or no fans? Oh, have fans, yeah. <laughs> Stand watching football on the TV with no fans in the stadium. It's so, so weird. <laughs> I think the atmosphere kind of goes, doesn't it? So I don't know what, what the players think, because um, I imagine they probably zone it all out anyway. But I don't know. I just I can't imagine it being so quiet and empty. I know some people have been going along to the stadium on game days to kind of just help with keeping everything going and making sure all the safety precautions are in place and and they've said it feels so strange like it's not it's not like a proper football game <laughs> wow that's really it's really different isn't it because you could never imagine that but no. this is the reality so someone's asking now don't worry i'm not going to outright ask you this so someone's asking what your salary is like now you don't have to tell us your exact salary but mm -hmm. we've got um we've got some like job profiles up i'm going to post some at the end as well so things like a community education coordinator which i know isn't your exact job so the average uk salary on that is like 24 and a half grand almost in the uk it project analysts they're over fifty thousand pounds a year so there's quite a wide range, I would say, of salaries in the sort of digital sector, isn't there, Tanya? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, massive. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I guess it's all about like where you work as well and how mm. much responsibility you have. Um, yeah, I mean, there's the, sal the starting salaries in a lot of tech companies are so good. Um, yeah. A lot of my friends went straight from leaving university to like quite big tech companies and like yeah, I was quite jealous. <laughs> yeah, I think like it's probably one of the better paid industries, I would say. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. And as you said, even starting salaries are actually really good. It's generally more than a lot of other sectors. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, this is quite a helpful question, I think. So someone's asking if I wanted to learn to code, how could I do that? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Um. So... I have no idea where you are, person who wants to learn to code. Um, there are so many ways. So if you want to kind of learn to code with other people, um, maybe your school has a code club running. Um, or if you Google Coder Dojo, so it's C-O-D-E-R-D-O-J-O. -O -O, um, they run coding clubs all across the world. All across the world? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so you can kind of put in your postcode and see what's nearby. Um, but if there's nothing there, there are so, so many websites that you could go to. Um, so I don't know what level you were thinking. But if you wanted to start off really simple, you could go to Scratch um, or you could go straight to Code Academy where they kind of walk you through different things. Um, one thing I would really recommend getting if you were interested is to look up the BBC micro bit. Um, they're like, 10 to 15 pound um, and they are you can do so much with them so they're like a little computer and you can code it so we use this in our introduction to coding clubs um, and we make things like fitness trackers we try and make our own goal line technology with them um, and the microbit website is so so good it has lots of ideas and activities that you can kind of walk through yourself okay that's really helpful that's really good to know so we've got a question from Bertha Park High School and they've said, do you get to speak to the football players? Oh, um, so not at the moment because they're kind of, they're a very shielded team right now because nobody wants them to get <laughs> these in. Um, so sometimes we'll try and get them along to some of the clubs that we run just to kind of come in and hand out certificates to young people or speak to them about what they're doing. Um, we also do work really closely with the women's team at Hearts. Um, 
they're absolutely like they are rock stars so in case people didn't know the women's team they all work full time and then they still commit to training like three times a week or something crazy like that and playing games um so I always try and get them involved wherever I can because I think like they're so inspiring just to listen to um and like some of them have one of them's like a lawyer and she still has time to do all this football training it amazes me that's absolutely brilliant that's really interesting to know as well because a lot of people wouldn't have known that I don't think so yeah that's brilliant okay someone's asking where do you see yourself in five years <laughs> oh <laughs> That's such a good question. Um, I always struggle with questions like this because I never really like plan things out, I guess. Um, like I know a lot of my friends kind of have like a, a plan of where they want to be and what kind of level they want to be in a, an organisation. Um, but I kind of just go with the flow. That sounds a bit crazy, but um, I know that I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now. So that's great. And then, yeah, I mean, I can see myself staying in this kind of area of teaching STEM or showing people what other areas STEM is in. It might not be in sport. Um, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that's the exciting part, I think. Yeah, no, that's that's so true. I think some people like plan and other people like to just kind of go with it, don't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really good. And so this is quite an interesting one. Is there a lot of women involved in your industry? Oh, okay. So this was something I was really worried about before I joined Hearts. Um, so I'm sure everyone knows or has heard that there are just not enough girls in tech. Like, that's it. There's just not enough girls interested or not interested. They're not taking it up to further education. They're not taking it further. Um, so when I was at uni, there was what? five six girls in a group of like 80 or something like that so it was crazy um and i know that sport has some similar things happening there where there's not a lot of women in sport um but i was actually really pleasantly surprised to see when i joined hearts that there were a lot of women in the office um so the owner of hearts Anne budge um she's obviously a woman um but she's she's done a really good job of kind of making sure the balance has been right um so there's a lot of women in like quite high levels in the company um and men of course so i think that's been really nice um i know in previous like tech jobs i've had there has been a lack of females um which has been disappointing but i think that that makes it my job kind of more important in my in my opinion anyway um because we hope that we are Kind of inspiring people to look at computing differently and look at engineering differently especially girls and that they're gonna maybe explore it further and try out this kind of job for themselves yeah that's great and that's what's good for people the more women come in hopefully the more females feel encouraged yeah to come in so people like yourself hopefully that's a really good role model for any females that would be interested yeah so, yeah so someone's asking what is the craziest thing that's ever happened to you in your job? <laughs> the craziest thing? Oh, um, I mean, I feel like any time we have a club running that's with a primary school group is always crazy um, because we have like 15 primary school kids coming in and they're like really, really buzzing to be at a football stadium. So they can't like contain their excitement. Um, and especially when we so we always do these fitness trackers with the micro bit that i spoke about earlier um and we always get them to test out their fitness trackers so they have to get up and they have to run around a little bit um and sometimes it's really hard to kind of get them to come back after that <laughs> like, you see the numbers going up and <laughs> um so i'd say anytime i have primary school kids involved it feels crazy but i love it yeah that's I think when you're working with young kids it is a bit crazy but it's, as you said it's yeah. exciting as well isn't it yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and someone's asking this is from Danny High School and they said what subjects help you get into your job oh um so for my job in particular um 
So I guess computing is definitely useful. I use that every time I plan out a program. Um, and then maths goes hand in hand with computing, whether you like it or not. Um, I think now that I've grown to kind of appreciate that maths is always around, I've definitely found ways to make it exciting. And um, when you see that maths is literally everywhere, it's incredible. Um, what else? Not sure. Maybe I, I did business at school. That was quite useful from a like organisation side of thing. Um, that's probably been quite useful because there's a lot of like planning and operations happening um, outside of like running the clubs. OK, that's that's really useful. I think that's really helpful for people that might want to do a role like yours. Someone's saying as well, was there anyone that inspired you to join the IT sector? Oh, um, oh, definitely, definitely. And um, so my computing teacher at school, so I went to Wick High School um, and my computing teacher there was Chris Aitken. Um, he, he is also somewhat of a bit of a rock star in the education right. area, I think. Um, or so it seems based on his Twitter. Um, so he he was really inspirational. Like he always found a way to make even the slightly more boring aspects of computing really exciting. Um, and my mum actually, she's definitely up there as one of my inspirations. So my mum works. Um, she's an IT support technician for the council up north. Um, and I guess I've always been around her work from a young age um, and I don't know I guess I never realised it until maybe I was older but that definitely had an impact because although I'd be doing like my computing homework I'd be like hey mum can you help me with this she'd always be like no <laughs> so I think that kind of pushed me to kind of work harder in that area as well because I obviously kind of want to be a bit like my mum in that sense um, yeah I think those are my top two yeah, I think that's really good, though. I think it's good you've obviously had some positive role models. And again, your mum, that's another female working in IT. Yeah. So that's really good. Yeah, and we've had another question from Denny. So I think we've covered it already, but just if there's anything else to add, what's the hardest part of your job? The hardest? Hmm. Um, hardest part of my job. Oh, I don't know. Um, so sometimes I guess when we're working with partners um, and we're like working to make an, a program or a workshop with them, sometimes that can be quite tricky. Um, so they're coming at it from like, a, we want our business to be involved with this, um, but we don't really know what we want, um, which is absolutely fine. Like that's where we come in and we help. Um, but sometimes it can just be hard to try and draw that information out of them. It's definitely, a skill that you kind of acquire after doing it time and time again and um, but it does take quite a lot of time to refine and get good at yeah I think it's and as you said I think it's like understanding like as you said people say this will be great but yeah you need to say well tell me what you want but I suppose as you said the more you do it the more um the better you'll get at it <laughs> okay so Okay, so I think this is going to be our last question today because I think the session has just flown by or nearly out of time. So someone's asking, this is a really good question. Um, someone's asking, can you do an apprenticeship or do you have to go to uni to work in your job? That is a really good question. Um, so in terms of getting into like the digital tech area, 100% you can do an apprenticeship. Um, there are so many great ones out there. We had... Um, we had Sky come along to our careers club a few weeks back and they spoke about their apprenticeships and they sounded like really, really fun. Um, so if you're interested in like IT in general, definitely have a look. Um, I think in, in my like specific area, I have no idea is the honest answer. I, I mean, I don't think you have to go to university to do my job if I'm being honest. Um, mm -hmm. I think even if you went, I don't know, I'm pretty sure as long as you can show that you have like the motivation and the get up and go to kind of make content, to learn new things, I don't think you'd need a qualification really. Um, it maybe helps sometimes because some companies might be looking for it. Um, 
but like for example when I started my first proper job after leaving university it was at this robotics startup yeah. um, and it was as an education person there um, but my degree was in computer science I didn't have any formal certificates in education um, like I wasn't a trained teacher or anything but because they'd seen based on my voluntary work or based on my interests outside of university that I'd done a lot they were quite keen to take me on anyway because they knew I had the computing stuff and they knew I was like willing to learn more about like teaching and learning side. Um, so yeah, if you can show that you're interested or you have experience, whether or not that's paid or that's voluntary, I don't think it really matters. Um, yeah, I, you can totally do it. Yeah, I think it is worth noting there are now so many different routes mm -hmm. into different yeah. roles. So unfortunately, we are just about out of time today so thank you very much Tanya for coming along that has been fascinating it's been really good just to hear how kind of digital technology ties in to a football club because as you said it's not something you really expect to go hand in hand so that's been great so see for anyone that's maybe looking for a bit of further careers information or advice and you can go to my world of work which is our website and there's a lot of information there these are just some of the jobs that are related to some of the roles that Tanya's done or job that she does just now. And also, if you're looking for a digital career specifically, and we do have our own digital website, which is called Digital World. So you can find some information on there. So thank you, everyone, for coming along. And thank you so much, Tanya, for being here.